Hey, today we're going to learn the three things that you need to know to take amazing photographs. So let's get started. We're going to talk about the exposure triangle. First thing is ISO. Now a lot of photographers you'll hear them say ISO. Well, that just tells you they don't know what it really is. It's not a word. It's an abbreviation. It stands for International Standards Organization. It comes back from the old film days. Basically they needed standards so that each brand of film gave you the same results. But what does it do? ISO basically is how sensitive your sensor is to light. How sensitive your camera is to light. The lower the number, the less sensitive it is. The higher the number, the more sensitive. So let's say you want to take um, photos of, you know, by candlelight. You have the ability to do that by raising your ISO. Now the disadvantage of ISO is the higher the number, the more grainy the photograph is. Now sometimes that's a good thing. Maybe you want to uh, give it the old newspaper look so you have a lot of grain in there. It looks like an old newspaper photograph. Uh, but generally you want to keep your ISO around 100, maybe 200. If you're shooting in bright sunlight outside, uh, ISO 100 is the best. It kind of gives you uh, uh, the ability to print images without any grain, very nice and crisp. Number two, shutter speed. Shutter speed is simply how quickly your shutter opens and closes to allow a certain amount of light in. The faster it is, the less light it lets in. The slower it is, the more light it lets into your camera. The third thing is aperture. It's also known as your f-stop. Uh, the aperture is uh, inside the lens uh, there's a ring that opens and closes, uh, and that is your aperture. The more it opens, the more light it lets in. The smaller the opening, the less light it lets in. The lower the number, the larger the hole is. The higher the number, the smaller the hole is. So, like F6, if you go with F16, F16 is a fairly small hole whereas uh, F5.6 uh, is a much bigger hole. You use these three things in order to get a proper exposure. Now why don't you just put your camera on automatic and let the camera do that? Well, it actually does a very good job at giving you the proper exposure. Now, by knowing your exposure triangle, you can utilize those three different things to get creative in your photography. Instead of just having a well exposed photograph, you may, uh, let's, let's say you're shooting a beautiful model, right? Uh, and as you're shooting, you realize that the background is very cluttered and you want your model to be the subject rather than everything in the background getting the attention. So what you would do is you would use a larger lens opening, uh, in other words a smaller aperture, um, and that will give you a small depth of field. So you focus on the model but everything behind the model is blurred and out of focus. That way your attention is just on the subject, the beautiful model, right? In other situations, if you're shooting three or four people, you don't want to use a large aperture because uh, the depth of field is small and if, if they're not on the exact same plane if one person's a little uh, forward of the other uh, then that person may not be in focus so you want to use a smaller f-stop you know the higher number uh, the smaller opening um, in order to make sure there's more area that is in focus if you're doing a landscape, you want everything in focus. Uh, so you're going to use maybe an F16 or, or F22 to make sure everything is in good focus. Now let's say you're 
doing some sports photography, maybe someone playing volleyball or baseball. Um, there's a couple of things you can do. Uh, if your shutter speed is too slow, if someone's jumping real quickly, then a lot of, they may be out of focus because of camera, uh, because of the blur, because they're jumping, they're moving. Uh, so what you're going to want to do there to capture sports or fast action is you're going to want to use a fast shutter speed. So you compensate for the fast shutter speed by uh, letting more light in with your aperture. So you have a lower aperture to adjust uh, to compensate for the, uh, the high shutter speed. Now generally when you're shooting if you're outside uh, shooting in a bright sunlight, your settings would be ISO 100, F16, and your shutter speed will be 1 one twenty-fifth of a second. That will generally get you a very good exposed uh, shot. But in certain situations, maybe you're not looking for just a good exposure you want to maybe throw the background out of focus or maybe you're doing sports so you need a higher shutter speed to capture the action so you adjust the other two or the the other two parts of the triangle to compensate for uh whichever one you you uh, uh, move from that setting so in other words Let's say you want to throw the background out of focus. Uh, you would set it at your lowest uh, setting, and that's according to your lens. Uh, now my, my lens here um, goes down to uh, 1.8. So if I set it for 1.8, I have to adjust the shutter speed in order to get the same amount of light in. So let me just demonstrate this uh, for a moment here. Now, of course, I know I said we were going to shoot a beautiful model. And, well, it's just too short notice to get a beautiful model. So I kind of got stuck with this guy here. Uh, but anyway, to make a point here, if you take a look at the background, uh, the background is totally in focus. This was shot at F16. Um, the background is competing with the subject. Uh, however had I shot at f1.8 it would have looked like this where the background is totally out of focus uh, the focus is specifically on the model um, so let's take a look at some of the different f-stops so this is uh, 1.8 if we go up one f-stop to 2.8 it's still nice and blurred in the background uh, F4, things are starting to get a little more in focus, but still not bad. 5.6, a little more in focus. It's starting to compete with the back or with the model a little bit here. Uh, if we go to F8, it's definitely more in focus and competing with the model. Um, F11 is pretty much all focus, and same with F16. Um, so. To get creative, if you want to blur the background, it gives you a much better image. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, well, what are you waiting for? Let's get going. Push that subscribe button, and we'll talk to you soon.